so I'd like to welcome Pam Knox to the University of Georgia, and she'll be talking climate with um, Animal Ag Advisors. Do you have a question? Yeah, we do. Let's check there. Yes. Good? Okay. All right. I want to start out by acknowledging that today is actually a special anniversary for me. Fifty years ago today, I was living up in Grand Rapids, and a tornado came two blocks from my house, and it got me interested in studying weather and climate. And so I've been doing weather and climate ever since then. And one of the nice things about being a meteorologist is everybody has a weather story to tell. So if I'm talking to somebody sitting next to me in an airplane or something like that, we always have something to talk about. And so that's a nice thing. But today happened at 9 o'clock at night, dark, soon tornado. But I do remember being stuck in the basement with my mom. So what I'm going to talk to you about today is a project that we just finished, uh, another project at USDA. Um, Talking Climate with Animal Agriculture Advisors. And I was actually part of a national team that did this. And you can see here it's broken up into different sections. Since I'm in Georgia, I was in the southeast. But we had partners from all, or a lot of the partners are in the room today. And I have to say this is one of the best organized projects I've ever been on. We all had jobs to do, and we got it done. We had some really terrific products that came out of it. Um, and so these are all the different groups that have come out. You can see that if you think about livestock in the U.S., the southeast is probably more poultry, um, the southwest maybe more beef cattle, the northeast more dairy cattle. So we all kind of specialized a little bit in what was important to our own regions, but it was definitely a national um, work that we really <coughs> did a lot of things together with. And just to acknowledge the support was from USDA uh, National Institute of Food and Agriculture. Now, actually, there's one more thing we're going to do because I'm going to Washington, D.C. in May to talk to the NIFA folks and to tell them a little bit about our project. So we're not quite done yet, uh, but we'll be close. The objectives of the project were to uh, really to train the trainer, to equip extension personnel to be able to talk about climate variability and climate change to their producers in terms of what impacts they're likely to see, what things they can take as far as management decisions go to um, deal with changing climate. You've heard a lot of that in the um, talks this week when they're talking about methane and carbon dioxide and how you can mitigate some of those emissions or adapt to the effects of changes in climate. So we really worked on that and worked on delivering educational programs that target those needs. So we're trying to not necessarily train farmers, but we're training extension agents to talk about this. Um, one of the goals was to provide on-demand on web access to science-based information. And I'll talk a little bit more about how we did that in a minute. And then some decision support tools as well um, that could be used by stakeholder groups, including the extension agents and even the public, because we didn't want to limit it to just extension agents. And then we wanted to coordinate the efforts across the nation so that the information was utilized optimally at a lot of different levels, both at the state level or even the sub-state level, um, regional and national levels as well. So it's available in a lot of different formats. And you know, anytime you're doing educational information out output, you're looking at a lot of different levels of information. You start off with the most basic levels, um, responding to kind of client questions at a very individual level. Um, so you have to have some basic knowledge of that. And as you work up the pyramid to higher levels, then you might need to be answering more questions of content. You might need to be able to respond to questions about something that someone has read in the newspaper. Um, and as you go up and get to more uh, high levels of educational <coughs> material, you need to have more detailed knowledge. So we're trying to address um, that whole different set of levels in our uh, output, which primarily was an online course, but there are a number of other products as well. So some of the product, products that we provided from the project, the AACCC project, we had conferences around different regions. Some regions had several conferences, some had just one. And at those conferences, we brought together a lot of extension agents and some specialists and you know, other stakeholders as well to talk about how climate is varying in their area, how climate is changing in their area, and some of the impacts on their local uh, agricultural practices, and, and talked about basic science, but also talked a lot about 
how you adapt to those changes. So we've had those conferences around the country. Um, total number of attendees is probably a little over 1,300. So we had a lot of people that were involved in different places. We did have some social media efforts. We didn't put a lot of time into that. As you know, things have changed a lot on social media over the last five years. So I think we're going to start the project again. We probably put that as high priority. But that has changed over time. And then we've done a number of different presentations at conferences, ranging from this one, Waste to Work. We've been present in two previous ones. <coughs> uh, talked a lot about um, the program as well in um, places like the American Meteorological Society, which is where I've been talking about the project. Because they want to know about how weather and climate information is being used to make decisions. You know, it doesn't, you don't want it to just be out there in the deck, you want it to be useful. And we want to make sure that people are understanding how to use it. So we did a lot of uh, local, regional, and even a couple of international meetings and some publications for that as well. Some other products from the project are a couple of blogs that we had. That we had a weekly blog that was sent out by David Schmidt up in Minnesota. And then I also have a daily blog um, that was available not only to the Southeast, but anybody can sign up from around the country. That's been pretty successful. I think since the blog started about three or four years ago, I've had about 38,000 views of the blog. It talks about different aspects of weather and climate, including some climate change, but not just that, um, around the, the country and occasionally outside the country as well. But the biggest problem, the biggest product that we had was an online course that we worked on together, which was built of many different modules, which I'll describe more in a minute, uh, but went out and was taken by a lot of people. And through that, they learned not only information about climate science, but also learned information about uh, how to communicate climate effectively to other people, uh, how to mitigate some of the impacts of, of greenhouse gases, and uh, some of the trends that we see in not only climate, but also in some of the way um, management practices have changed over time. So here's a, a basic view of what the online course included. It's about 15 hours of video to watch to go through all the course. And to sweeten the pot, of course, you have to provide a little incentive. So we did have some continuing ed credits that were available to people who did it. It started off by talking about what have we already seen, climate and weather trends that we've already seen, which is a really good place to start when you're talking to farmers because, you know, they're out in the fields. They know what the weather was like last year or the year before. They can really relate to that. So if you talk about trends and you, you put this, them into the context of how the weather has changed over time, that gives it a little bit more comfortableness with the weather. We talked about the impact <coughs> of those climate changes on animal production. We talked about adaptation to some of those changes. Then we had a long section on climate science where we answered questions like, how much is the sun responsible for changes in the Earth's temperature, or other questions like that. And that was, a, that was the section that I worked on. Uh, then we talked about sources of greenhouse gases, which we talked about earlier in this meeting here, the mitigation, and then finished up by talking about communication strategies. Uh, we don't want to be in the position of just going and telling people you have to do things this way. Nobody likes to be told that. That's like your mom telling you to go brush your teeth. Um, so we talked about how you communicate those, those, that information about climate science and animal production in a way that's really effective. And so that was all included in the course. Uh, over the four years that we had it, there were probably about 500 people who at least expressed some interest in it, but 321 participants registered. So they were interested enough to register for the course. 38% of those completed the entire 15-hour um, package of, of videos. A lot of people just went in and did one or two videos of what they were interested in, not necessarily did the whole thing. And one of the most interesting things to us was that even though the majority of the people were from the US, there were a lot from other countries too. I think 64 other countries expressed some interest in this because they don't still have access to a lot of information about this climate and animal agriculture. In addition to the online course, we have a website, Animal Ag Climate Change. I checked this morning, it's still up and working, even though the, the project is done, it should be working for at least the next year. All the course material on there, including all the videos and slide sets, references are on there. 
Um, there's also some shorter videos that you can have access to. 30 minutes is pretty long. Uh, good for training, but anything longer, anything longer than about five minutes is tough for somebody who's just got a quick question. So there's a lot of different, different sets of information that's available there. Uh, if you look, uh, so you can't really read it on here, but there is a section called references or resources, and that would be where you find a lot of that information. Some of the outcomes from the from the program, both the, the regional meetings and the websites and so on, are listed here. This, this represents the value of mm -hmm. um, the information that's provided in the regional meetings, website, online course, newsletter, and the working group. Um, and I won't go into all the details here. You can go back and look at it later. I think they're going to have these presentations available. But generally, better than 60% in every category said that it was either very valuable or valuable information that they were getting. So we really felt that, that people were finding what we provided to them to be very effective and useful to them. The outcomes, if you look at the depth of coverage, they learned about uh, research topics related to animal ag and climate change. They gained a new perspective or they identified areas where they really wanted to increase their knowledge. Again, there are very few people who didn't learn anything at all. Um, but most people felt that they had learned a lot, and there are others, some others that said they learned something from that. Probably depends to some extent on what their background was. But some people already know quite a bit, and so for them, they probably wouldn't really have learned a lot. But um, we're glad to see that most people found it to be of value. Um, we asked people's ability to do new things based on the course results, ability of being able to communicate climate science be able to talk about sources of greenhouse gases, and so on. And so they all went through, and uh, most of them agreed that it was either they became very able or able to communicate some of these different ideas to their clientele. Um, so the extension agents really felt empowered, I think, to um, improve their ability to communicate some of these aspects of climate change to the animal ag producers. And based on it, the motivation was also that they felt that they were more highly motivated. You know, if you give somebody information and tell them how to use it, then they feel more empowered to go out and actually try it out. And so we really felt that the course and all the other places of, of providing information, like the workshops, did a really good job of trying to encourage people to go out and not only take that information, but also to go out and use it. Some of the lessons that we learned uh, for science communication strategies, we need to use them and we need to teach them. So, you know, you can, you can do lectures, but you also want to give examples of how they need to be used. And so, we need to really use multiple different ways of learning to promote these kind of ideas. And we thought, it, we've also learned that it was very important to start with local trends. You know, if you're a farmer, you're probably in one area for most of your life. And so you know what the local trends are there, and by talking about that, that's a natural place to enter the conversation about changes that they've seen in weathering climate over time. And then uh, also we need to focus on adaptation. Mitigation is something that we need to consider, but adaptation is something that um, we're going to have to do regardless of how much mitigation efforts um, are able to be done now. And you know, with changing politics, the mitigation is probably a little harder to do because there's more regulation involved in that uh, than there is an adaptation. Some of the other lessons that we learned are that the main barrier to not having more of the people finish, I think, is just the lack of available time. Uh, you know that extension agents are very busy people. They're frequently on the road. They're out in the fields. And so it's hard to get them to sit down and either go to a workshop or sit down and do 15 hours of video. Um, so we're really pleased that as many people did as, um, as, we, uh, as I showed you earlier. But um, it's hard because there's a lot of other competing interests and they have to deal with all those too. And we also found that Extension is trusted, but a lot of farmers are getting more of their information from crop advisors or animal advisors, people that are out um, selling herbicides or pesticides or, or um, forages or crops. Uh, other people like that. So we need to make sure that we're reaching those folks too. Uh, we can't just talk to the extension people because a lot of farmers aren't necessarily using that information. And we also found that the partnerships are key. 
you really need to bring in people from a lot of different areas to do this all together. Um, so in the Southeast, when we had our conference, we not only had animal producers, but we also had the, the, the specialists in crops, we had coastal people, and we had forestry people, because they have a lot of similar interests, and there's a lot of things that they could talk about together. <laughs> and, and we also had breakout sessions, so they could go and talk about things that are more specific to what their industry was looking at. So it's, it's helpful, I think, to bring in um, people from different backgrounds to do joint conferences and trainings and to highlight the relevant resources that there are. And I think that's all I've got. I'm happy to answer more questions about that. The, like I said, the website, Animal and Climate Change, is still there. All the information on the course is there in the videos if you want to go check it out. Uh, most of the people, or people who did one of the videos, you want to raise your hand? Did you do a video? One, so several of the people that worked on the videos are in the room here this morning. Uh, it, was, it was a very interesting project to do, and uh, I think we we'll probably redo it again next time, but uh, with we'll maybe a little shorter videos. But overall, I think it was really well received. Yeah. Is, is that course uh, still real? It's not available as a course anymore. All the material, all the videos are still there, but we're not offering it for to do it yet anymore. No. Well, I, I qualify. It's, oh, yeah. it's available, but uh, the uh, direct exchange with the instructors, that's no longer. Yeah, when we, did that, when we did it originally, they had quizzes they had to pass, and they had to write little essays. Right. And we're not, we're not doing that part of it anymore. Yeah. All the videos the are still there. Yeah, they're still there. Yeah. And has anybody from the projects interacted with the USDA Climate Hubs to kind of share that information across? That might be a way to kind of yeah. keep things uh, out in front of you. Yeah, in, in fact, um, we had somebody from the Climate Hub at our Southeast meeting, Steve McNulty, um, was there. And I just, I just got some funding from them to continue to work with the Climate Hubs for the next year on some of this. Um, so hopefully we'll continue to, to talk about this over the next year. But they're very interested in looking at this information. I know Steve took the course um, because he wanted to see what it was like. And so um, a number of the other people from different climate centers have also gone through it. So they're very interested in this because it's very practical. Yeah. Did uh, that, that I, the hub you mind, did, did you interact with the climate science centers also? Yes. Um, yeah, well, I know Brian, or Ryan Boyles, who's the deputy here in Raleigh. Um, at the Climate Science Center, and he's very interested in it. And I think some of the other ones around the country as well um, have come to some of these regional meetings. Um, so th there's all these different climate groups that are out there now from different organizations, and most of them are, are looking at this information as a way of really building on the resources that they need to provide to the public. And most of our regional conferences partner with those folks. Yeah. So like we have the National Crop Mitigation Center in the West, yeah, we had the Climate Hubs um, and a bunch of climate consortiums. So we, that was what well, we tried to seek out most people essentially to, to get together. Because we really see, you know, as this project is ending, we want to make sure that we had a way to keep it going. Um, and that's one way to, to make sure that it's still being used. Any other questions or comments? All right. Well, let's think.